In yesterday's episode, which was fraught with stupidity, for instance, I can't believe I was trying to put this on upside down, and even more, I can't believe I showed it to you, but that's the way it is lately. I had told you something that wasn't true. One of the viewers sort of pointed it out to me. I'm going to have to take these out of their out of their bags anyway, so Okay. These pieces here that I was thinking was was a, a cradle. And I guess the reason I thought it was the cradle, <clears throat> excuse me, is because it was along with the uh the uh, nameplate for the Rodney. And uh uh, I, sh I was thinking at the time, why is there three? You know, it just didn't make sense. And also, the way they, the, the way it was curved here for what I thought was supposed to be the bottom of the ship, I, I thought it, it just didn't look right. It should be more flattened out on the bottom. Well, it, it turns out these pieces here uh, have nothing to do with making a cradle. What they have to do with, and I haven't tried this yet, so you're going to be seeing it along with me for the first time. Okay, the the idea is that they go like this is prob this one probably goes goes here, and it's to strengthen the deck. So so this piece along here would go across like this and then when you mount the deck on it it doesn't sag under the under the weight of all the uh, superstructure and you know pressing down and stuff like that it makes a lot of sense now <laughs> just thought I'd better straighten that out yeah now I know that I should be working on the case but I don't feel like it I feel more like uh, finishing this uh, labeling all these sprues and uh, for instance, if you remember on the Bismarck, this is uh, sprue N, so we'll just make a big N. And uh, even though it's it's really obvious uh, what what this sprue is with without a label, I'm just going to do it anyway. There are these little things I I should remember that they were on this sprue, but just in case. And then uh, what I want to do is check. Okay. Uh, everything off. I haven't opened, this is going to be the first time, by the way, that I've opened the manual. Uh, I, I did look at the back, um, but this is the first time I've opened it, so you're going to see it with me for the first time. Okay, so, uh, all right. Uh, we know we've got sprue N. Where is it? All right, so we, we know we got that one. I'll just make a little check here. All right, and I want to do that for all of them. And also, today what I want to do, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is going this today for some reason. Uh, what I want to do is, uh, if I have time, I want to photograph uh, in, in uh, high resolution the entire manual, the way I did the Bismarck manual, because it makes it handy later uh, yeah, how many pages have we got here? Okay, there's 47 steps. I think there was 50-something on the Bismarck, wasn't there? 40 pages, so yeah. Uh, that, that's, that's the plan for today. Also, I want to check some of the parts. Like yesterday when I was looking at some of the packages, I was thinking that it the superstructure did not show the detail as as uh, vividly as the Bismarck superstructure did. Now maybe it was because it was still in the in the uh, plastic. Uh, anyway, enough talk. I'm just going to go ahead now and, and label and do my parts check because now is the time uh, if there's a problem. Uh, not a year and a half from now or whenever when I want to actually start on this. Now is the time to find out if anything's missing so that we can get a hold of Trumpeter and see if they 
can uh, send me a sprue or whatever that I might be missing. I, I really don't anticipate anything missing, uh, but it, but it is it is possible. So yeah, let's let's check it off now. Uh, you know, it's not like I want to come back on Cellar Dweller or anything like that and 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 return it and complain or anything because there's nothing they can do. Uh, yeah, see you in a few minutes. All of the packages are gone through now and checked off. And I am, you might say, 100% sure that I am not missing anything. Now I'm noticing here on the decals, uh, in, in all likelihood, I will use the decals or the flags uh, on, the, on the Rodney. Uh, being as that uh, this flag is a lot like the, what the Canadian flag used to look like years ago. Uh, I think that's the Union Jack, isn't it? I should know, I'm Canadian. Anyway, uh, yeah. Um, as far as detailing on the photo etch goes, well, I'll, I'll put it on the rotator and we'll, we'll take a little look. Now, I would say that probably the detailing on the photo etch is just as good for the Rodney as it is, as it was for the Bismarck. Um, I'm not noticing too much difference. In fact, it, like I say, it's about the same. One thing that I did notice though was the railings are a little bit different. Um, on the Bismarck there was 28 lengths of railing, whereas for the Rodney there is only 12. I suppose that could be considered good news. <laughs> Also, it appears that, um, I don't know if you remember, but on the Bismarck, the, um, the railings were the, on one side where the post came, there was just sort of a little bit of a nub, you remember? Whereas on this, it appears to be designed in such a way that it wouldn't matter which way it went up, it's, it's the same. Yeah. Now, as for our decals here of the flags and so on, I got curious. I was a little bit embarrassed because I wasn't sure anymore. And uh, so I googled it. And yeah, this is the flag that we used to see flying from the uh, school flagpole when I was a little kid. Um, yeah. Here in Canada, that is. I guess we've got some detail going on there. I don't know if it is quite as pronounced as the turret on the Bismarck was, but there's some detail going on there. Now this is one of the pieces that I was looking at yesterday that I thought just didn't seem to have the detail along the bulkhead, uh, you know, on the superstructure here, that the Bismarck had. Now along the bulkhead of the Bismarck, if you remember, there was like life rings and all that kind of stuff sort of embossed into the side. Now it could be that the rod knew was like that, that, you know, or it could be that maybe we're going to have stuff to stick on, except where where do you stick it on? There's no markings or anything. So, uh, got another piece here, I'll show you. Well, it could be that once that's uh, sprayed, you know, with a, a flat gray. And I think I've mentioned this before, I'm going to limit myself to just basic colors of gray. I'm not going to blend it. Uh, 
I got myself into problems when doing the Bismarck because I was sort of shading the gray with, with white. And uh, then when it came to make a, a copy of it later on, like if I want to do a touch up, I couldn't get it quite right. So I'm going to stick to maybe three, three, possibly four different shades of gray, the Tamiya XF gray. I don't know which ones, but uh, I'm going to stick to them throughout the entire build. That way, if a, a year down the road when I want to touch something up, I'm not going to have a problem. Um, yeah, I could be wrong, but I'm thinking that, th uh, you know, detail like this. No, it, it may have been bold like that. Or it could be that uh, whoever designed this particular kit, they, they didn't make it quite as fine as they possibly could have. Now, now maybe that, that is okay. I, I don't know. I'll worry about it when we come to it. Now, I don't need to worry about it at all. I think it's going to look really good. Yeah. Let's see if I can find another piece here. Now, the detailing on the aircraft seemed to be okay. And I was noticing in the manual when I just started to peruse through it a little bit that we do the aircraft at the beginning of the build, not at the end like we did with the Bismarck. So it'll be kind of fun. And uh, if I think of it, I'm going to show you a picture, if I can find it, of an aircraft very similar to this that my dad actually flew. And um, yeah, only it wasn't a biplane. But it was kind of like this. It was a pusher. In other words, the propeller was on the back of the engine instead of on the front. I think we're going to do okay here. Now I could not find the photo that I was thinking of. However, it was a plane identical to this one. It was called a CB. It was a four-passenger plane. It would haul four people off land, but you'd only get off the water with maybe three. Uh, my dad kind of complained about it not being a very good performing airplane. It wouldn't carry very much, burned a lot of gas. Uh, he only had it for one summer. Now I believe this is the largest piece of superstructure. And you can see the uh, deck planking there is embossed. I think it's going to look all right. Uh, but once again, I'm, I'm not seeing a lot of detail on the side. I guess that's about as far as I can go. Uh, let's take a look at the main deck. When I did the deck tan for the Bismarck, it seems to me that I made up my own blend. I don't know if I was happy with it or not, but I think I want the Rodney's deck to be slightly different from the uh, Bismarck deck, so I'm probably going to just use the basic deck tan that Tamiya has. At least that's the plan right now. I hope you're watching this in uh, high definition so that you can see the planking there. Uh, yeah, if you're not watching it in HD, well, you're just not going to see it. Um, but thanks for watching anyway. When I first started out here this morning, I fully intended to be able to show you the manual. But in order to do a good job, it's a little bit of a little bit time consuming. You have to get every page lined up and, uh, you know, photograph it and, you know, print it out as a JPEG. And, well, you, you guys that are photo buffs, you know what I'm talking about. It takes a little bit of time. So uh, we'll be doing that tomorrow. So thanks for watching. And all being well, we will see you tomorrow.